Hi, Elise. It's so good to see you. <laughs> it's so good to be here, Katie, and great to see you too. Yeah. Um, well, last night was the Emmys. <laughs> mm -hmm. What did you think? <laughs> Oh my goodness. I've got to be honest. I did not watch the whole thing just because the way pandemic is, um, I'm having self tapes coming and trying to manage everything. And honestly, I completely forgot until it got going. So then I went and got as caught up as I possibly could. Mm -hmm. And I loved the opening monologue because mm. <laughs> I was like, I was very confused for probably the first three minutes. And I was like, how dare everybody in Hollywood? Wait, what? How is Oprah there right now? <laughs> There's nobody socially distancing. <laughs> and I like knew something was up, but it was still like playing with me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought that was, I thought it was very, very clever. Yeah. Um, I recognize some people's outfits. You did? Okay. Yes. You're really good. <laughs> I know a big part of me was like, this has to be past footage. Um, I love, I love the reveal that it was Jimmy Kimmel was in the audience. Wait, there I am. <laughs> Wait, how in the world am I up here and I'm down there? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, what did you think of um, Schitt's Creek basically taking so many? I, mean, uh, I think it's a really great show. Um, I still haven't finished watching it all. I'm somewhere in season three right now and I'm loving it. And it's definitely my when I've had a busy day and I just want to laugh, I always go, to, it's one of like my three comedies that I'm watching right now and I love it. Mm -hmm. And there's something that happened, I think probably end of season two, beginning of season three, where all of a sudden they start becoming good people and they're changed by the town. And I really, I, I find that beautiful. And so I'm actually getting more into it as the show goes on. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been really awesome to see the Levy's like father and son, just that collaboration. And I've always loved Catherine O'Hara and yeah, just a phenomenal show. Yeah. Um, what did you think of um, the, the way that they did everything because of the pandemic, because, you know, it was so different. Everyone was at home, except for like Schitt's Creek, yeah. they actually had a whole setup, right? I was like, yeah. I was like, do they know ahead of time because they like had this elaborate setup and then they won mm -hmm. like every single category. In the yeah, category. I know. That's so fun. It's like, it did remind me of like being on, um, I've been in a few regional theater productions that have been so successful and we won one award show and another award show and just sweeping so not not to place myself with that cast at all in that production but just the feel of being on a it, being a part of a very successful project it's so cool that they were able to do that yeah and and i appreciate that they were able to hold the awards in the way that we're all basically running our lives right now with zoom mm -hmm. and i say we're all not everybody is Mm -hmm. But I, I, I would say you and I are, and most of our people are doing that. A lot of people, a lot of people are like not doing that anymore and saying, ah, F it. Let's just do gatherings now. Let's not wear masks. And I think it's a really, another great example of, um, Hollywood stepping up. They don't always step up in the right way, but I think this was a really awesome way to step up in this moment. As an actor and as a coach for actors, do you find it inspiring, like this award show inspiring, or do you find it kind of depressing because you're like, are we working? Are we not working? <laughs> I always find it inspiring. Um, I, again, I have to go back and watch the whole thing. I couldn't figure out how to replay it from where I started watching. So I have to go back and watch, but I did enjoy the interviews ahead of time. And I just... There's something about the intimacy of being in someone's home mm. like that we're getting to have now in a way we've never done before. Mm -hmm. And I think I saw this for one of the first times um, when the pandemic first hit and Hugh Jackman and Allison Janney had a movie they were promoting together mm. and they were both doing an interview from their homes and it's just it was so fun to see what their background was <laughs> and I know you can choose like a beach background or like a fake background but I love it when people use their actual backgrounds yeah it's just um yeah. again it's just more vulnerable it's more intimate 
Um, I always love seeing Tracy yeah. Morgan's because he always he has like a baller house. <laughs> That's awesome. It's yeah. also so cool. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, there's one more thing. I, oh, there's one more person I saw. Oh, you know what I loved? Oh, what's his name? Sethis. Uh, hmm. Gosh, I can't think of this. There was a, a father and daughter. The father plays um, William on This Is Us. What is his name? Cephas Jones. Is oh, um, yes, I can't remember his name. Um, I don't either, but I know who you're talking yes, about. Yes, I love him so much, and it's terrible that I can't remember his name. But there was some such a beautiful moment in the interview um, with his daughter being nominated and him being nominated, and mm -hmm. just. Getting just, I think there's some special moments that we, I mean, not, I think there's definitely a, a special moments of human connection in a new way. I'm always inspired by award shows. Like the speeches will always make me, always heart, stirs my heart and like, yeah, this is why I'm an actor. And especially in recent years when um, like through the Me Too movement and when, things have come up and people have taken a stand in their speeches. I love that. I love when people do that because it's yeah. a really, um, because we all have a responsibility yeah. and by not saying something, you're saying something. Yeah, so. absolutely. And I do believe that, you know, um, the more out there you are and the more presence you have, the more money you're making, the more it's important for you to actually um, be saying things and to help influence, you know, yeah. in a positive direction. So, mm -hmm. right. yeah. Um, okay. So now, like we've been talking about the pandemic, it's like, yeah. What have you been seeing for yourself? What have you been seeing with your clients? Um, are productions coming back? I feel like they are. And um, and yeah, what any any positive things happening in the? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it's it's been such an interesting time. Um, I feel very fortunate and very lucky in that the Global Actor, which is my coaching program, I've believed for years that you can make an acting career work from anywhere that includes if you live in the Midwest and had to move home from New York to move back in with your parents or if you had to leave anywhere that you were living full-time with this um I really believe that you can have an acting career from anywhere mm -hmm. and so when the proof of it <laughs> yes yes so yeah for those who, who don't know like I live um three hours outside of New York City. I work in New York City often, haven't been back since the pandemic, and that really has not affected anything. Mm -hmm. And I was living that way before this. So when the pandemic hit, I knew I had certain things in order as an actor that were not going to really affect my career mm -hmm. at all because I worked so much in voiceover. Um, and so it was incredible to have something like a, a mission when the pandemic hit to say, oh, okay, how many actors are doing this in voiceover? How many actors are narrating audiobooks? Like, let's, let's talk about how you can make that happen. And, and it was so cool to have something to do instantly. Yes. And then that said, we're now six months into this new way of living. And it's definitely, it's definitely been trying at times um, with, as a, as a coach, it's been, I've had to take a few steps back, um, in a way, like usually I'm like, all right, let's go, 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 go. But I've noticed for myself personally, I've wanted to take some, some time, take a few steps back. And, um, I'm definitely someone who is always goal oriented, always working on 10 million things. And so the pandemic gave me an opportunity that I wouldn't have taken myself mm -hmm. to be still and mm -hmm. to have some quiet and to check in. And it's, it's really reminded me how much social justice is important to me. And it's given me an opportunity to rethink my career in a way and, and go further when I choose the projects I want to say yes or no to I'm definitely saying no to things more often than ever. Um, because, I really believe the work that we put out there, we have a choice of um, the way our art is impacting the world. And I, that's important to me. Um, so again, getting back to um, seeing how, it, how this has been with my clients is that um, 
things are, I mean, as far as film and TV, things are definitely starting to happen more now, but I've seen some really creative projects created. One of the simplest, most beautiful short films I've ever seen in my life was created two actors via Zoom. And it was three phone, conver three video chat conversations between a father and daughter or the characters. And it was so moving. And so it's great that production is going back, but I really want to see artists continue to use this medium more. Yeah. Um, because there's always more create more creativity possible. Right. And I really believe that. I believe also that um, even if you're not being asked, right, it's important for you to still be creating and doing something to move things forward in the way you want it to go. You know, yes. if you even look at, I mean, like Tyler Perry, right, he was, he got the governor's award at the Emmys, and then um, they, when they were introducing him, Chris Rock was talking about that, right, talking about mm -hmm. how um, he really had to make things happen for mm -hmm. himself, because there wasn't, you know, any but who was doing things the way he was doing things and he wasn't accepted in the beginning um he was actually homeless at one point <laughs> yeah. you know so it That's was so inspiring yes mm -hmm. you know so i really believe in a lot of um creators actors directors producers writers right like to um continue to do the work that you love and then to do it yourself you know to, as well Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you find that, you know, you, the voiceover work, audiobook work is, was that continuous through this pandemic? Like, has it been continuous? Is it one of those jobs, let's say, mm -hmm. that's like pandemic proof? Yes, I think it's completely pandemic proof. And I said that back in March. And um, I will say there were two weeks in there where I didn't have anything lined up and I kind of freaked out. <laughs> I was like, oh, and then I was like, wait, remember, this is fine. Remember, this is fine. It was, it happened to be, um, I think I had a book that took me through the first week of the pandemic. So somewhere in mid-March, but then I had nothing on my schedule. And I was like, oh, I'm telling everybody this is pandemic proof. What? What? And then all the books started coming again. And it was, and now I'm booked through February. Um, so yes, it's pandemic proof because before the pandemic, 90% of this work was being done from home studios anyway. Mm. So why would that shift? And also I think the pandemic is getting people even more into listening to audio um, as far as podcasting, as far as audiobooks, audio dramas, uh, people are voracious for new content. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially because um, film and TV content, you know, it's like they couldn't continue. And if you've watched a lot of stuff, you're like, oh, there's something yeah. else. There's something new right now. Mm -hmm. And so being able to um, listen to a new audiobook or to, to um, hear something, uh, a podcast online, right? It's, yeah, that's fresh, fresh new content. And um, there were two, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say there were two audio product um, projects that popped up during the pandemic that were proof of that. Like, okay, it's creators getting creative with a new medium. Um, Nick Kroll and John Mulaney had a very silly podcast. Did you hear it? Oh, hello. Yeah. Well, it was like a continuation of their characters from their Netflix special, which was ridiculously awesome. Yeah. Um, and it was just like a podcast about Princess Diana. Yeah. It was just like... Right. And instead of saying podcast, they call it pod podcast. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. It's so good. So that was, it was so fun to just see people just say, hey, it's a snow day. Let's do something we would never do otherwise. Um, I don't know if you heard of the Hamilton, um, the Muppets, uh, a full audio version of Hamilton. No. That's really good. <laughs> that recommend. sounds awesome. I'm super excited to start that. <laughs> yeah, full on with like Beaker is one of the main four guys. So just get ready for some Beaker rapping. 
Um, <laughs> it's really good. Oh, that's, oh my gosh, I gotta check that out for sure. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So I, I like I'm not sure how that project came about, but I imagine like the I think the actor who plays Kermit now is um, obsessed with Hamilton and was just like, hey guys, let's get together and do this. That's my in my imagination. That's what's hap what happened. But um, yeah. yeah, it's been really exciting to see artists start stepping up. And in, in my own um, community, there have been people who've been wanting to create for a while that just got going with it, yes. that are taking advantage of this time. Yeah. And it's so inexpensive, like to get started, really. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's, definitely. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you're going to, you know, explain that to people in your master class, you know, about kind of the equipment that you sort of need and, and, you know, to get things going and all that kind of good stuff. But it's just, to me, it's just a really great way to continue doing what you love, which is acting mm -hmm. and doing it in a way that is, um, of course, of this moment, because podcasts are pretty much like the hottest things <laughs> everybody's doing having a podcast um but then also um creating income for yourself you know that Definitely. is yeah and then not just having that you know server job which of course has you know like either either you work you're not serving or you may be a back a little bit um mm -hmm. but it's not the same as before it's not the kind of money you used to make yeah that's right. for sure yeah and let's talk about that um, a little bit because to me, I don't even like the word survival jobs because to me, like when I hear that, when somebody tells me that it's a survival job, then I, what I think about is that you're only doing certain things just to survive, right? And if that's your mentality, if you're calling it a survival job, then of course, that's all it's going to be. It's just a, a way to just survive, right? Mm -hmm. You're never going to thrive when mm -hmm. you have that kind of mentality and when you have that kind of a job. <laughs> yes. Yes. I agree with you. I don't like that word either. I don't like survival job. Yeah. It sounds desperate to me. Yes. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And even with, to me, like day job or side hustle or any of those things, um, there's a connotation that it's not it's not what you really truly want to be doing. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. And I don't know if you found this to be true, but like when you're able to do what you've been wanting to do, like let's say, you know, you're an actor, you want to be an actor and you want to be, you know, doing all of these big projects and you get paid as an actor, like, you know, doing voiceovers and audiobooks, then all of a sudden, all these other opportunities tend to open up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you yes. seeing that? Definitely. And I think it's, um, it's like, in, it's inviting it in by doing it more and by saying, well, I, I am a working actor and uh, here's proof of it, obviously more opportunities are now going to come my way because I do this all the time. Yeah, I, I definitely had many times in my career where I've had to make those subtle shifts that you're talking about in, in thinking about what your day-to-day -day work is. And I, it actually goes back to when I was in college. My family wanted me to be a music educator or just an educator and not not be an actor because that's scary and you might not make money and uh you know family loves loves you but the way that my family loves me is just do things the way that we know work so that you don't you know get hurt or, or whatever that is um so for me i went into music education at the beginning of my college career knowing full well that i was going to be an actor so the first couple of years whenever someone would say what, what what are you majoring in and i would say music education but i'm really going to be an actor and i just started hearing myself say that over and over again and i was like why am i doing it? why 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 that's this is my life i'm paying for college like hold up what do you really want to do and so making a shift and switching degrees and like coming to terms every time i would step into well this is what i really want to do i i gave myself self-compassion and the self-love to tell myself like yeah you deserve this and you're gonna work hard and you're gonna get it you're gonna do it and and so that happened along the way that happened you know 
I eventually booked my first college gig and then my first uh, professional gig during college. And, you know, that just built upon and built upon and built upon. Um, so I was working as soon as I said I was going to do this, like things started happening again. Like I was getting paid acting gigs in college as soon as I made that shift. Mm. And somewhere maybe halfway, like a few years out of college, I think again, there became expectations where people were like actors, wait tables. Before that, I was like a teaching artist doing a bunch of different things. And then I was like, oh, I gotta wait tables because that's what you do. Mm -hmm. You just gotta do that and you gotta feel the struggle. You gotta be a starving artist, you gotta be struggling. And so I did. And of course, I went into credit card debt and I was living in expensive cities in Washington, DC and New York City. And it never felt good. Mm -hmm. I was always exhausted. I'm a hard worker, but how much of that energy was going towards this thing that really did nothing for my artist self? Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so like to me, um, I, I love the idea of if you can, you know, get started working on audiobooks, working on your voiceover career, it's like then you're just bringing that kind of energy into your life. Mm -hmm. And the more that you bring that kind of energy into your life, then it, it actually propels you to actually bring in more. Um, yes. And then also what, what you said, I think in like, um, in your masterclass, like, you know, um, the materials for your masterclass is that it's also something to talk about, right? With mm. acting directors? Of course. So, so narrating audiobooks is acting. And I think narrating audiobooks, voiceover, doing video games, um, it's all acting. So again, the moment people start saying, well, I just do this or I just do this, um, it's all acting. Mm -hmm. If you're, I, I even think like promo jobs at convention centers, if you are putting on a performance, that's acting too. So I think I would just encourage every actor to just start being a little bit more open to all that is acting. Mm -hmm. Because that, the moment I started doing that, I, I've acted in museums, I've acted on tour buses, do you know what I mean? And it's like every, those kinds of things give you such great practice mm -hmm. that can you know help your next film performance your next tv performance on camera on stage um so for me when i started when i found audiobooks um i was working a lot in regional theater at the time and what it did for me is that i was now working an acting job where i was making money and like i was able to make in a week what i would make in like four weeks in a theater contract an equity theater contract mm -hmm. so um it, g it gave me way more empowerment as a, as a performer and just saying like, oh, I'm worth this much money? Oh, okay. And, and then I got to start being a little bit choosy, but yeah, you can definitely talk about this work with casting directors because again, it's acting. And so I've had a number of casting directors and, and, and also if people think that's weird, like you're not for everybody anyway. So like if you say you're, you're doing this thing and people aren't into it, like that's, that's okay. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there are some casting directors who will want to talk in session. There are some who don't, but I think if someone respects this as acting, like that's great because it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I, 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 I think I told you that story of like um, a cousin who just graduated from college. She um, was telling me about her favorite um, audiobook narrator. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. There, there are the audio wars or like the Grammys or the Oscars of the audiobooks. There's a whole audiobook culture. And again, they're working actors who are doing this work. So it's a really tight-knit community, a really great way to um, build a repertoire of your work mm -hmm. and um, get to play characters you would not typically play um, on camera, unless it's like your own thing if you're doing a one-person show. But I think, I, I like to think of each project I do as a one-person show. So in some cases I'm playing 30 different characters. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. And that'll... Yeah. And not only is it something I can talk about in the industry and 
give people, hey, click here and like listen to that whole performance now or just five minutes. So um, again, for casting, it gives people an idea of what you can do. Um, also, it's just really improved my cold reading skills, given me an opportunity to play with improv in a way that I haven't in a while because you're just doing that all the time. You say you've got a 200 page book, a lot of it's cold read. You, you, you do read it all once before you record it, but then it's trusting your instincts. So you have to believe that you can handle this mm. and you, and you can. So I, the confidence I've got from narrating as many audiobooks as I have truly carries into every acting work that I do. And um, I was so impressed with how many audiobooks you've read, <laughs> narrated. <laughs> um, what, how many, you know, just share with us, how many have you read so far? About 120 audiobooks in five or six years. Yeah. 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 It's incredible. Yeah. It, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And um, I've read, I've definitely read more books than I ever thought I was going to read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. so great. Um, okay, so you're about to, to launch um, a master class and yeah. about audiobooks, right? And um, can you give us a little bit about you know what you're going to be teaching in these master classes? Sure. Yeah. So uh, my free master class, which is coming up in the, in the next couple of weeks, is called Your Pandemic Proof Actor Day Job. So we're going to use that word actor day job because a lot of people do use it or your survival job. But again, I want you to be thinking of acting as your all the time job. And so as we talk about what working in audiobooks is like in this free masterclass, you're gonna get a great introduction on how you already have, if you're an actor, you already have 75 to 80% of the skills you need to do this job. And then we kind of go through the first three steps that you need to get the work. Mm, that's great. So in terms of craft, in terms of building relationships, et cetera. That's so exciting. I mean, it's so exciting to think about. Um, and, you know, this is what I tell actors and other creative people. It's like to find something that, you know, you're already good at. Yes. You're, you're sort of your zone of genius, as I like to call it. <laughs> yes. um, and then being able to get paid to do it. Um, and then it actually does create that momentum for you, right? And mm -hmm. other things, it gives you more confidence too, right? Absolutely, yeah. yes. And um, and getting back to earlier, um, when we're talking about as the industry is starting to open up more, once September hit, uh, everything started coming my way. All these other voiceover jobs, TV auditions, like everything is now going. And I'm already in work mode. I didn't need to restart. It's like, okay, yep, I'm going to do this project and I'm going to get to that audition. So it feels so good to be like, yeah, I've already been acting all summer, all spring. <laughs> Let's just keep going and, um, and knock this audition out of the park. Yeah. Um, anything that you can share with um, somebody watching this and if they're sort of on the fence about, you know, I mean, there should be nothing on the fence because this is a free masterclass. You know? Oh my gosh. Yeah. What have you got to lose? I will say um, if you love reading books and have ever enjoyed reading books out loud in your life, come take the class uh, because there's incredible opportunity and whether you just feel like dipping your toes in the water or you're or this is something you've thought about doing for a long time there's such a range of work and a range of how you can do this work and i would love to talk to you about it it's uh, been really life-changing for a number of my clients and um more than anything it excites me so much when someone says I got to leave my day job and I'm doing this full time now. And, and that's cool because um, while some people don't mind waiting tables, there is something about putting your energy towards something for several hours a day that just keeps you from keeping your creative brain going. So absolutely. Yep. The more that you're in that creativity, the more flow you're going to bring in into your life. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So everyone, yeah, join, join in on the class, you know, get, yeah, get started. I really do believe that, you know, just by attending the class, you can, you know, you can learn something and get. Started. Yeah. And I'm going to give some steps that you can take right away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think you're, you're also giving people who are going to the class, like another little free gift too, right? Yeah. If you're interested in voiceover in general, once you, um, sign up, which is at myactordayjob.com is where you'll go to sign up. Just by signing up, you're going to get my uh, VO starter kit. So if you're interested in other parts of voiceover, it's actually an eight part video series and a PDF file. Um, so it'll give you a ton to just get started and answer a lot of the questions you might have just as you dive into it. Perfect. Thank yeah. you so much, Elise. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> Thank you so much for this. I so appreciate this opportunity. Absolutely. Talk soon. Sounds good. Bye.